Welcome to another video and another Keystone highlight. This is a video series that aims to cover many of Path of Exile's Keystone passive skills in detail, talk about their mechanics, their interactions and various use cases in different builds, and you can catch up with all of the Keystone highlight videos right here. And in today's Keystone highlight it's Versatile Combatant, now this keystone has an interesting history since Versatile Combatant actually used to be a Gladiator Ascendancy Notable prior to patch 3.16 where it was changed in functionality and added to the passive tree and it now resides at the bottom of the passive tree and this is the only way to obtain this keystone right now. So Versatile Combatant has three modifiers, minus 25% to maximum chance to block attack damage, minus 25% to maximum chance to block spell damage, and plus 2% chance to block spell damage for each 1% overcapped chance to block attack damage. So this keystone is all about the blocking mechanic and it's not very popular at the moment. It's used a bit more than in Balanced Guard but that's not a very impressive feat. In general block has been relatively out of favour ever since the defensive changes in 3.16 and prior to that patch block was considered to be one of the top tier defensive mechanics along with dodge. But in the current game people generally favour investing into more reliable defences. So let's take a look at Versatile Combatant beginning with the first two modifiers the downsides. Minus 25% to maximum chance to block attack damage and spell damage. The baseline maximum chance to block is 75% and that applies to the maximum chance to block both spells and attacks. So this keystone is going to cut down that maximum from its baseline 75% down to 50%. Now this is a hefty reduction to maximum block chance and modifiers to maximum chance to block attacks or spells are very rare. You can get 10% to maximum chance to block attack damage on the gladiator's reigning veteran ascendancy notable and 5% to maximum chance to block attack damage on the ascendant gladiator's ascendancy notable. These are the main places where you can gain a considerable amount of these stats but there are some other options too. You can get 2% to maximum chance to block attacks on Shaper and Warlord amulets as a suffix, and 2% to maximum chance to block spells on Crusader amulets. And there's the Anvil, this is a unique amulet that grants a lot of modifiers associated with blocking, and this was actually buffed in 3.19. It has a large chunk of attack block, some flat life and mana gained on block, and 3% to maximum chance to block attack damage amongst some other stats. And the block mastery wheels on the passive skill tree have two separate masteries, one that grants 2% to maximum chance to block attack damage and another that grants 2% to maximum chance to block spell damage. And you can get a corrupted shield implicit that can provide a further 1% to maximum chance to block attack damage. So there's not that much availability of this stat in the game and that means that the downside of versatile combatant is quite impactful. If you were to compare going from 75% attack block down to 50%, well, you go from taking damage from an attack once in every four attacks on average to taking damage from an attack once in every two attacks. But you do also gain spell block, and on a build that previously had no spell block, you go from taking damage from every spell that hits you to only taking damage from half of them on average. Now, on a build that relies on blocking as one of its core defensive layers, such as one using Aegis Aurora or another recover on block mechanic to provide powerful defenses while mapping, this downside is likely to be too much of a detriment, even with the upside considered. But for a build which is layering other defensive mechanics such as evasion, the downside may not be very considerable at all because this type of build may not have actually invested in block without access to this keystone to begin with. So why would they invest into block and use this keystone? Well let's take a look at the upside. Plus 2% chance to block spell damage for each 1% overcap chance to block attack damage. This stat is interesting because once you've reached the maximum chance to block attack damage, any stat that you have which provides chance to block attack damage also grants chance to block spell damage at twice its normal value as well. This is incredibly powerful when considering that modifiers which increase your chance to block spell damage are typically much harder to find than modifiers which increase your chance to block attack damage. And it's even more impressive when you consider the location of the style combatant on the passive tree. Other than the dual wielding mastery which converts its inherent attack block into spell block, the closest additional chance to block spell stat that you can reach on the passive skill tree is the Sanctuary Shield Wheel all the way up near the Templar start location. And whilst you can get chance to block spell damage on your gear pieces, it's still more limited in availability to its attack block counterpart. 
and due to shields, dual wielding and most staff bases granting attack block, it's considerably more difficult to gain large amounts of spell block from gear alone. So the upside begins to become very valuable because it provides the possibility for builds on the lower side of the passive tree to gain substantial amounts of spell block without the use of things like temper, shield or heavy investments into gear. And this will be a very strong defensive mechanic to have, especially while mapping if you're also using things like evasion and spell suppression. So what about actually gaining enough chance to block attack damage so that you can cap both attack and spell block using this keystone? Well, at a baseline, you'll need 75% chance to block attack damage to gain 50% chance to block both attack and spell damage using this keystone. That's because the 25% that is above 50% becomes overcapped attack block when you allocate the keystone, and this will translate into 50% spell block. Dual wielding inherently grants 15% chance to block attack damage, and you can gain another 22% chance to block attacks from the Swagger and Blade Barrier passive skill tree wheels that are located right next to Versatile Combatant. But in general, gaining lots of attack block on a dual wielding build is far more difficult than a shield or a staff setup. It's doable, but it requires more investment. And using a staff with this keystone is also doable, but once again less favourable because the staff block nodes are located all the way up near the Templar start location on the passive tree, and you're going to once again need a heavier investment to make it work. But there is the staff mastery which grants recovery on block, so that may be worth it for mapping. But the main use case of this keystone is going to be with a shield, and that's because you can gain so much more chance to block attacks with lower investment. You can get a suffix modifier on shields that rolls up to 15% chance to block attack damage. Depending on what shield base you're using, that can mean that you can get up to 41% chance to block attack damage on the shield slot alone. You can combine this with the mastery that appears on shield wheels on the passive tree that provides 1% chance to block attack damage per 5% on your shield. This will grant an additional 7% chance to block attacks if you have a shield that has at least 35% chance to block attacks and 8% if it has 40%. Then, the Testudo and the Deflection passive skill tree wheels that are located right next to Versatile Combatant provide 25% chance to block attacks while wielding a shield. So just from this combination mechanics alone, you almost have enough attack block chance to cap both attack and spell block at 50% using this keystone. And you'll be able to cap it easily with an extra passive tree wheel or some attack block elsewhere on your gear. There's also the Dawnbreaker shield which just has a huge amount of block on top of being a very strong shield defensively, but do be aware that this one loses attack block as you take fire damage from hits, and as this will be overcapped attack block when using versatile combatant, anything below 25% overcapped attack block will lose you 2% spell block for every 200 fire damage you've taken from hits in the last 4 seconds. And the Ascendant's Necromancer Notable can make use of Bone Offering to gain a decent amount of both attack and spell block, which will drastically lower the amount of investment you need to cap both blocks using Versatile Combatant. The Necromancer can of course do this as well, but it's extremely unlikely to path all the way down to the bottom side of the passive tree to grab Versatile Combatant. I'll also mention the Anne's Heritage Unique Shield, which grants a decent amount of attack block, and importantly also has the minus 10% to maximum chance to block attack damage modifier. While this is a downside, it can be used to gain spell block with lower investment using Versatile Combatant, because any attack block you have over 40% will now be overcapped, so the minus 10% to maximum attack block will translate into 20% spell block if you had that overcapped block already. And if you have 50% chance to block both attack and spell damage, you could consider making use of recover on block mechanics, which can be found on unique shields like Aegis Aurora or the Surrender, or on influence shield mods on Shaper, Crusader or Warlord influence shields. You can gain smaller, flat amounts of life and mana on block from places such as the Block Mastery or on items like the Anvil. On a build that doesn't invest too much into block, the versatile combatant keystone becomes quite valuable defensively, especially while mapping on a character that has other defensive layering. Being able to gain a considerable amount of spell block on low investment will make a very noticeable difference, especially if you also have other mechanics in place such as spell suppression. And the use of this keystone on the small amount of builds that are actually using it in Crucible is quite varied. The large majority of builds using Versatile Combatant in the Softcore Trade Crucible League are Pathfinder builds which are using shields with high chance to block, along with the Testudo and Deflection wheels, and they're then using a Rumi's Concoction Flask to cap both of their blocks, which is a nice option if you can keep the flask up reliably. 
And outside of softcore trade, the other leagues are largely dominated by gladiator builds using this keystone to shore up their defences. These are mainly spectral throw or shield crush builds, and since they're already investing into a lot of shield wheels on the passive tree that increase their damage whilst also providing block chance, this keystone once again provides quite a good low investment option to gain a good chunk of spell block. And I think overall this keystone is somewhat underused, but it's likely that this is due to the type of builds that are in favour right now and the ones that are not. Gladiator is very unpopular right now, and that will contribute largely to this, but also builds that use shields and spec into shield wheels are quite limited in use as well. So I don't think that it has too much to do with the keystone being undervalued. It's more that right now it's hard to make good use of this keystone on builds that are popular. And I will also briefly mention that this keystone has some synergy with the Dissolution of the Flesh Unique Jewel. This jewel makes you reserve any life loss from damage instead of actually losing the life, until you have a period of 2 seconds where you do not take any damage, at which point the reservation is removed. Due to this 2 second window which cannot be modified, sources of avoidance are highly valuable, and a build on this side of the tree will struggle to gain spell block, so this keystone is a great opportunity to gain a level of avoidance to buy time for that 2 second window so that you can recover. Overall, Versatile Combatant is a keystone that provides an opportunity to gain considerable amounts of spell block on a build that otherwise may not be able to gain much of this stat, at the cost of trading off a large portion of attack block. It's useful on builds layering defences, and far less useful on a build that relies on block as a core defensive mechanic. If you've enjoyed this video, please do like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified whenever I post a new video. I'm trying to grow this channel and I need your support. So if you're finding my content helpful, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the join button below the video, just like Frank Blanco and Kevin M did. Thank you for your support. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay tuned and stay safe.